Uh, anyways, we need to uh, we need to look at um, kind of the rest of this here, and as long as you understand those concepts with with uh, with sequences and this this general term formula we just came up with here, there's there's a formula on your formula page that says uh, oops that says t and term n is I'm having troubles here. Term n is a times r to the n minus 1. That's the formula for the general term, any term in a, in a geometric sequence. There's four things involved there. And if you want to find something else, if you want to find one of those values, it's a formula like any other. If you have tn equals a r to the n minus 1, that's the nth term. That's the first term. That's the ratio, and this is, of course, the term number, a number of terms. We wrote that down at the beginning somewhere, but term number or number of terms, depending on the context. So if you're given a sequence like this, but you're not told what's in the middle, a good strategy here that I think a lot of people follow is they make a list of what they know, and then they try to find out the one that you don't know. Just like any other formula, if you have four things, you have one, two, three, and four. If you have four different things, you can you can sub in three of them and find the missing one. So in this case, do you have, which of these things do you have here? We have, we have A. What's A in this case? A is... What's A here? 32, right? First term is 32. What's the ratio? If, you, if you're not sure what the ratio is, just divide any two terms, right? But it's 2 there. N is what we're looking for. And term N, well, we know that this is the last term in the sequence here, so we'll say that that's the nth term, and we want to know what N is. Then if you, you, know, you fill in any, any of the values you know in that formula, so Tn is AR to the N minus 1, 16, 384 equals 32, 2 to the N minus 1. You could divide those two things, 16, 384 divided by 32. What does that give you? Did somebody do that for us? Was it? 512. If you don't happen to know this, since N... What, what type of numbers is n going to be here? Because I don't want you to have to resort always to what you might resort to is using logarithms to solve that. You could use logarithms to solve this, but if you know something about what this kind of a, what that number has to be, what type of a number that has to be, you can solve it just by using the fact that these are related bases, right? You can try what uh, what power of two is that? Two to the just off the top of your head. Due to the, oh well, whatever. Anyways, you could try playing around with it a bit. You don't have to resort to logarithms. If 2 to the ninth is 2 to the n minus 1, n is 10. Okay, so it's the 10th term. You can also check on your calculator pretty quickly. If you want to, uh, if you want to verify that using the calculator, just go, just go to this, not that, go to this blank screen here and just try and put, put, uh, 32 and then go times 2. So that's the second term, third term, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, right? Just to check that you're you're right. You can get the calculator to come up with it pretty quickly, right? You have to you have to know how to do both things there. Um, that's a way of confirming it. Which term is 1024? Same kind of idea. Okay, which term? So the word, you know, number of terms or which term is this? You're still wanting to know if it says which term is 1024. You're still wanting to solve for n. So I'll let you do that sometime. Not right now. Um, other problems, same idea here. You have to set up something with the idea of either using this formula, tn is ar to the n minus one, or just using the the other kind of concept, which is the ratio is some term divided by the term before it. 
and you can use that in solving all these different problems. Basically, what you have to do is look at the concepts and then try and try and solve some of these problems. Uh, this one's probably a higher level question. Certainly, right now, you're given you're given three terms with in terms of expressions, and you need to try and determine what x is, and then use that to find the value of the three terms. There's lots of different ways to do that, and I'm going to let you work on that um, at some point when we're done with this. The last thing in here with geometric sequences is uh, geometric means. You've uh, you've presumably used the word mean before in mathematical terms. What does that mean? What does a mean mean? Yeah, basically it means average. Now we're expanding the the the, um, the term in this case, it's kind of a middle sort of value, right? The, when you come up with the average, the average is a way of coming up with sort of the middle of where a bunch of data lie. If you have test scores or something from 10% up to 100%, you're trying to say here's where sort of everybody lies on average, right? Um, it, it's going to sort of mean the same thing here, except we're going to look at it geometrically. What you have actually found before is the arithmetic mean. The arithmetic mean is a number in between. Let's pick easy numbers here, like 10 and 30. I'll actually, make some more space. But the arithmetic mean between 10 and 30 is a number in between here that forms an arithmetic sequence. So the arithmetic mean, or in other words, the average of 10 and 30 is 20. It forms an arithmetic sequence plus 10 plus 10. Um, if you ask for the geometric mean between two, it's not a number that forms an arithmetic sequence. It's a number that forms a geometric sequence. I probably should have picked nicer numbers like 10 and 40. What's the arithmetic mean between 10 and 40? Like to a grade 8, what's the average of those two? 25, right? 25 is not the geometric mean. The geometric mean, geometric mean is... What would it be? What number would have to be in between there to? Yeah, 20 is a number that forms a <coughs> geometric sequence. If For this one, you can just do it by just kind of thinking, well, I double it and double it again. If you're not sure, you could you can just turn it into a geometric sequence problem. If somebody says, what's the geometric mean in between there? Just, I don't know, call it X or something or an unknown that you're going to find. And then just realize that this is term 3, this is A, right? This is term 3 and this is A. You can you can uh, fill in that formula that you had. Term 3 is AR to the 2. So 40 is 10 times R squared. R squared is 4. What can R be here? It can actually be plus or minus 2 because in this case, there's probably two answers here. We should have said plus or minus 20. Either one of those would work. We tend to forget the negative one because in real applications, you don't always often have alternating numbers like that. But this is the single geometric mean between there. Okay, so it's, it's written out here for you that geometric means are values between two given numbers that form a geometric sequence. You can ask for more than one. You can say, what are the three geometric means between 2 and 1250? Well, they're plus or minus 10, 50, and plus or minus 250, since when you look at it all together, that's a geometric sequence. You can, you can do it exactly the same way as we just did there. Just treat it like, I think a lot of people are going to have success by just writing out a little, not a picture, but if it says, what are the three geometric means between those two numbers, I would do this. Because then you could probably solve it for yourself. This is A. This is term. What term is that? Term 5. Think about how many times you've multiplied by the common ratio to get there. And so on. And you can, you can work those out. So I don't think we need to spend tons of time on that. Um, I do want to give you some time to work on that after. But we should look at geometric series as well here. Okay, so I'm going to pause this for a second. Can you uh, maybe take uh, five or ten minutes here before we look at geometric series and try some of the questions in that first section? <coughs> 